Okay, I need to make something clear real fast. I was trying out a new camera angle. I probably won't try it again. And yes, I'm trying to grow a beard, sideburns, whatever. The reason this is important is because looking back at the video, I noticed that the lighting illuminated my sideburns. It makes me look like my face is like white or something. It's, it's well, yeah. Um, just, just. Please don't focus on my sideburns being illuminated. Please don't. I'm sorry. I won't try that camera angle again. Uh, sorry about my bed not being made up either, even though. Ah, oh, well. Um, sorry, not sorry. And, um, and yeah, for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. Don't worry about it. It's just me. Anyways, enjoy the video. Peace. Good vibes, guys. I'm back again today for yet another video and um i don't know when you guys are seeing this video but uh for me it's march 11th 2021 and um i got to thinking uh the other night i was like man march 11th is coming up you know what that day was i was like no noah what is that day i was like that's the day that the nba shut down a year ago at least because of the coronavirus pandemic which sadly we are all still dealing with which is a you know in the chat it, it really is um but um you know i hope all of you are staying safe and i hope um we are staying strong together these are tough times for all of us it's tough times for me but it could be way worse um it's just important to try and count your blessings during this time and um realize how how blessed we are as a people um if you've lost loved ones um I, I i really feel for you guys i um i continue to pray for you guys and think about you guys um even though i don't know you individually um i hope that things get better for you guys and that you can keep going because it's all gonna get better i know it will if you just get to the light on the end of the tunnel that being said i am here to talk about the one-year progress of the Charlotte Hornets. And listen, one thing I can do for hours is just talk only about the Charlotte Hornets. And so I thought to myself, wh why not try? Why not just do exactly that? And so that's what I'm going to do. Be sure. Hmm. Or are you unsure? Be sure to leave a like. But if you are unsure, then think about your life choices. If you are unsure, maybe you don't like. Hmm. Yeah, that's just me overthinking something. Be sure to leave a like. Or, what if you're unsure, though? Unsure to leave a like. Unsure to leave a like. And subscribe if you're new. If you, if you want to. I can't control you. I, I can't do anything. I'm just a person behind a camera making videos because I like to talk about basketball. So, yeah, to my 21 subscribers out there, y'all are the best, y'all are, are the people, man, um, and we're just gonna keep building this channel up, and if, worst case scenario, three years down the line, I still have 21 subscribers, at least none of y'all left, right, so, um, yeah, life's good for me, and let's dive into this video, so, March 11th, 2020, um, the Hornets were playing the Miami Heat. This, so, um, this comes with a story, actually. So, you know what? Forget about everything I was just saying. I'm just going to dive right into the story. If you guys are good with that, right? Well, you can't control me, so. I can't control you. You can't control me, so I'm just going to talk anyways. In your face. Right? So, about, like, a year ago, right? Um, we, we were doing meh. Right, everybody thought the Hornets, most people thought the Hornets at the beginning of last season were going to be the worst team in basketball after losing Kemba Walker in free agency, Jeremy Lamb in free agency, and letting Frank the Tank Kaminsky walk in free agency and didn't pick up his option. Come on! I loved Frank. That's a story for another time, though. I actually met Frank Kaminsky. Kind of. It's a lame meeting story, but I, I did technically meet him and get his autograph. But man, we lost a goat. And then we, we pick up, we, we get P.J. Washington in the draft, right? And everybody, people are like, who? Who? I'm like, well, give him a chance. I didn't want Sekou Dumboya. Oh my goodness, the mock drafts had us taking either this dude named P.J. Washington or Sekou Dumboya. And I was like, no foreign players. We just dealt with Nicholas Batum for a season. No more 
foreign players. At least from France. I'm done. Yeah, and Tony Parker was hired on us. So we had a really rough offseason. Also, Tony Parker's from France, too. So, uh, no, no hate out there for any Frenchmen or women. So, but, um, anywho, we were not looking so hot as a team. And then, what do you know? Devontae Graham starts the season off the bench. And he starts putting up 20-point games. And then James Brego, our coach, is like, Hey, I should start this guy. And so... Devontae Graham ends up having a great season, was a, in my opinion, a candidate for most improved player, got snubbed, but I, I, I don't honestly think Devontae Graham should have won it um, over Brandon Ingram. I, I think, though, that Devontae Graham should have been, like, third, because when you go from four points per game on awful efficiency to 18 points per game and, like, what was it, like, seven and a half, eight assists per game on meh shooting, come on, fam. I mean, I know he shot like 38% from the field, but he shot like 37% on threes on a lot of attempts from threes because he had to take the shots. So it was a good season for him. Um, and, you know, we surprised a lot of people. You know, a lot a lot of Hornets fans came into the season looking like this guy. Ew, wrinkles. But then you have your fans like me, who once I saw Devontae Graham getting in the starting lineup, I knew somehow that we were going to be decent. And I knew good times were ahead, telepathically. He he he, I knew it the whole time. And so, from then on, the, the Hornets kept on surprising me. You know, Terry Rozier, we got him in free agency. People thought he got way overpaid. Ended up exploding. He's continued that this season, right? Um, P.J. Washington, great rookie. Who would have thought it? Um, all rookie second team. If Eric Pascal didn't exist, he would have gotten the first team, in my opinion. But then again, Eric Pascal got a lot of buckets on a really terrible team. Which is why I still think Peter Washington should have gotten it over him. Calm down. Calm down. It's in the past. Okay, and um, you know, we had Cody Martin and Caleb Martin end up showing up. Caleb Martin way later in last season. But Cody Martin dropped the season, defensive player. He actually won us a game, actually. He got a defensive stop one game. I remember that. Um, and so, yeah, we had little surprises here and there. Miles Bridges, he had a fine season, but he struggled a little bit. Malik Monk, had a, he struggled. He had some crazy games, though. Look up Malik Monk's game winner against the Detroit Pistons uh, from the 2019-2020 NBA season. I saw that in person. Yeah. And, um... Bismack Biombo had his basically, arguably his greatest regular season um, of his career. So yeah, that's sick. Um, now we were a young team. Nobody thought anything from this team, and we got some good wins. And as a Hornets fan, that was great for me to see. But um, anyways, once quarantine started, you know, I was in a really, really bad place. I'll, I'll admit, I, I know a lot of us were, but for me, I was just really down because I didn't have anything to do. Basketball is basically my life. And, um, there was no basketball, no, no, uh, NCAA tournament, no NBA, no MLB, no, N well, take obviously no NFL, no, come on, man. But, um, there were just no sports to watch, really. And, um, but the thing that did make me really happy was that last game. Right, I just realized I went down a rabbit hole and then went down another one. That's me for you. I'm getting around to the actual story now. Um, I've got a buddy named Jimmy. He goes to my school. And um, me and him, will go back and forth. We've done it for years. He's a Miami Heat fan. He has been since I started. Well, he's been a Miami Heat fan since the Bron Bron days in Miami. And uh, yeah, bandwagon, right? Um... He was a big fan of Dwayne Wade and, and all. But uh, I'm a Hornets fan. And, you know, I, I guess the Heat and the Hornets aren't rivals. But I feel like we should be. We are in the same division. And the past two times we've made the playoffs as a franchise, we got stopped by the Heat. Yeah. We were even up 3-2. Like, I think it was like five years ago. We were up 3-2 in a series against Miami Heat and then Dwayne Wade went off. So, um, 
yeah, I, I, we, we keep running into Miami in the playoffs, and I have always been like, oh, we are rivals. And me and him would argue back and forth about, hey, did you see that Miami loss? He's like, well, Charlotte's not that much better. Um, and then his team made the finals. But um, the thing that made me really happy was that the last game the Hornets played on, which, of course, off like was um, it was March 11th, which, thank goodness they got to play that night, guys, because, oh, my goodness, that was the night when the whole Rudy Gobert thing happened and those games got postponed. Thank goodness that game ended up finishing. But um, the Hornets were down terrible in the first quarter. I remember that. They were playing Miami. and um, But then they outscored the Heat like 37 to like 11 or 12 in the, the second quarter and ended up winning and beating the Miami Heat. And Devontae Graham, which I have been a Devontae Graham fan since his rookie season. I saw potential in him. I called it. You cannot call me a bandwagon jumping fan just by hopping onto the bandwagon of somebody suddenly becoming a star. Because I don't see any Devontae Graham supporters this season. Except for me. I'm still there for him. He's going to be fine. Um, anyways. Um, he had been slumping a little bit. In that game, he had 30 points, 6 assists, and, um, okay, fine, I have it written down, but he had 30 points, 6 assists, shot 11 for 19 as a point guard, and 8 for 11 for threes. Definitely a slump-breaking game. And somehow that night, I, um, I just had a gut feeling that was going to be the last game for the Hornets this season. There was talk of them being invited to the bubble, but, um, I just knew that wasn't going to be the case. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Personally, oh, I didn't want that to happen because I had a feeling that we could actually win some games. And if we won games, then we'd actually go higher in the um, the, the standings and end up being like the nine seed, but not make the playoffs. And so, yeah. And then at that point, the odds of getting LaMelo Ball gone we were lucky enough to get the third the, the third pick i mean good grief that's the highest jump we've had in like 20 years i think it was the baron baron davis jump but um yeah for Devontae graham to have that game was huge it was cool for me to see him do that well um pj washington had 17 miles bridges had 16 points eight rebounds cody martin started he got six points eight rebounds uh, Cody Zeller, double-double, 14 and 11. Um, Caleb Martin off the bench, 19.7 rebounds, 3 assists, 4 steals. That was his breakout game, which sucks because it was before the pandemic. <laughs> then he had to wait another year, basically, to play basketball. That that's, that'd totally be me. It's like you finally get on the team and then something just has to happen. That, that'd be me. Jalen McDaniels played, Biz McBiamba played, they didn't do much. Um... And Terry Rozier was actually out that game. I forget what it was from, but the previous game against the Hawks, we lost by five. But, like, it was 143 to 138, and Terry had, like, 40. So, at that point, I was like, you know, Terry Rozier is actually pretty good. And then we went off into the offseason. Now, at this point, I, I'm looking at this Hornets team, and I'm just, like, reflecting now. That team, that season was so weird. We went from a team with a crap ton of veterans. Tony Parker, Kemble Walker, Marvin Williams, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Nicholas Batum. I mean, not Willie Hernan Gomez isn't young, but I felt like that was weird too. Bismack Biombo, um Frank Kaminsky's not a vet technically, but it just like we didn't have any young guys. We just didn't. And um you know we barely missed the playoffs. Barely missed the playoffs. And then we lost Kimball Walker. And then it went from that season of mediocrity, right? Nobody watched Hornets games, even though, I mean, Kimball Walker was going off. He scored 60 points and still lost. Sounds like Bradley Beal. But um, that next season, it was just so weird thinking about it now. Because, like, Devontae Grimp ran the show. But you would think, if you never watched Hornets basketball last year and you're looking at only this year, you would have thought that Terry Rozier was running the show. And even though Terry Rozier averaged like 18 points per game last season, he didn't actually run the show. Yeah, I know. It was definitely weird. It was a weird season. Miles Bridges, you know, he had an up and down year for sure. Good grief, he could shoot crap sometimes. Malik Monk. Started off rough, had crazy good games. He had one wild game in France when the Hornets went to, to play in Paris against the Bucks. He went off. 
And then um, he got caught violating some anti-drug rule, like marijuana or something, and got kicked out. And then he didn't play basketball again for another year. So, so yeah. And then Biz Mambo, oh, it was so fun watching Biz and Demonte play together. Just like the that roll, pick and roll, whatever, the dishing it out. That was really fun. Um, it was just a weird season for sure. Um, and then free agency time. This is when things went wild. We end up signing Gordon Hayward, which I thought he was going to Indiana. And, um, I was angry. I was so angry. I was working and my brother kept calling me and I picked up my phone. Finally, I'm like, dude, I'm working. What do you want? He said, Gordon Hayward just signed with the Hornets. I was like, don't tell me, do not tell me. And he was like, he signed a really big contract. And I was like, not the guy who gets injured so much. I was just, I was, mm, mm. And then a report came out apparently that um, the Hornets had tried to trade for um, Gordon Hayward or, or sign him. You know, it was signing him in free agency years before, but the Utah Jazz matched the um, restricted offer. And um, I was like, okay, what if he gets injured? But then I thought about it more and more and more. And uh, I think I went into this. If you go back and watch my first video on this YouTube channel, I was talking about this. Or maybe it was my, it was my second video. But, um... Oh, shoot. I just realized the draft came before free agency this year. I'm dumb. Okay, well, I'll get to the draft in a minute. But, um, yeah, free agency. Gordon Hayward. And I'm thinking, I'm like, our biggest free agents over the past 20 years or so has been, like, Al Jefferson, Dwight Howard... Marvin Williams and Nicholas Batum. Lance Stevenson. That that's it. So I mean the fact that we we saw oh and, and Tony Parker, old Tony Parker, who didn't do really anything. I um it's just like Gordon Hayward is already almost at the top. He's almost there with Al Jefferson. Shoot, he's past Dwight Howard. I mean, it's just if he stayed healthy. And um, then there was the draft. Uh, draft lottery. Oh, my goodness. I was watching. I was like, please don't get fall. Don't fall. It got to nine or eight or whatever they were supposed to get. And they didn't get it. And so they moved up. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There are three studs supposedly in this draft. Two of them, maybe all three of them, have high bust potential. Just get to number three. Number four comes along, it's Chicago. And I'm like, I want number two. I was really high on James Wiseman. I We needed a big man. I, I wasn't even thinking in the realm of, oh, the Hornets could end up being box office. People want to watch them again. I was in the, um, the thinking process of, Okay, Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier, we're still going to be a small market team, but we have Devontae, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, um, P.J. Washington, and James Wiseman. That's a good team. We can use James Wiseman in the pick and roll. We can use him just throughout the offense and dig defense. We need a center because we don't have a center. Cody Sutler is bad. And Bismack Biombo, love him, but he's a free agent and he's short. But... I went through free agency already, and we also bring back, um, brought back Bismack Biombo. But um, but anyways, now this, the giraffe was before free agency. Sorry if you're getting confused. Um, and then the third pick comes around, and it's the Hornets, and I'm just like, okay, because in truth, I did not want that first pick. I did not want that first pick. No, 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 no. That was too much pressure. And I felt bad for the Timberwolves, too. I, I had heard some rumors of them trying to trade that pick. They ended up not. Edwards is looking meh this season. But the Timberwolves are awful. And LaMelo Ball would probably have made them a lot better already. Maybe not. But, um, but yeah. It was just, it was wild. I did not, I, I didn't want Anthony Edwards. At first I thought I did, but then I was like, nah. He, he reminds me a little bit of Wiggins. Um, ironically, he ended up going to Minnesota, just like Wiggins, but, um, 
But then Golden State came around with the second pick. I was like, don't take Wiseman. Don't take Wiseman. And then they took James Wiseman. I was like, oh, no. No. Because now we have LaMelo Ball left. And you know what? LaMelo Ball could be good. But I didn't know much about him. And I was just like, mm, just take LaMelo Ball. At this point, I was like, Hornets, you have one job now. Take the projected player. If you take Onyeka Okungwu, if you take Killian Hayes, just take the guaranteed guy. Because people keep clowning us year after year for our draft mistakes. And we took LaMelo Ball. And I was like, okay. Okay. This could fail, but at least everybody else thought that he would go number three. And so if he ends up being bad, at least everybody else thought he was going to be number three. It wasn't some crazy Patrick Williams Chicago pick. Sorry, Rip Bulls fans. Patrick Williams is okay. And um, then the season came around, the preseason. My ball throws the ball, ironically, behind his back while he's running. Or maybe it was with his right hand. Mother just catches it and he's, lays it up or dunks it. It was against Toronto. I'm like, what? What? Did, hey, 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 did, did you see that? It, it was wild. And then uh, LaMelo Ball gets his first NBA game and he scores zero points. But you know what's funny? Because I keep saying this. I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not comparing him to Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. But I'd like to joke saying Michael Jordan was the third pick in the draft. Melo Ball was the third pick in the draft. Kobe Bryant in his first NBA game scored zero points. Melo Ball scored zero points. So he's in good company by not doing great at first. And he thought he was going number two to the Warriors. But he didn't. He fell to three. So, so yeah, that was interesting for sure. And then, um, me. Gordon Hayward ended up being great when he wasn't hurt. I mean, he, he hasn't been super hurt, but he's dealt with little things here and there. But he's been great. All-star candidate for sure. For a while, he was in the 50-40-90 club. Then he started missing free throws all the time. Um, but then um, Terry Rozier, dude. Terry Rozier proved the people wrong. I don't know why he chose the season where you have Devontae Graham, Lamelo Ball, um, Malik Monk, um, who's the other player? Terry Ro Ro Gordon Hayward. All these ball, like they want the ball, they shoot it. They, they, their usage is a little higher. Why do you shoot this season? To start averaging 21, 22 points per game when you could have averaged 30 last season. It's just wild, guys. It's wild. We are 17 and 18. We play tonight against the Pistons. I hope we win. I can see us being rusty. I can see it now. And the Pistons are one of those teams that have beat like the Lakers, the Celtics, the Clippers, the Nets. I, I hope that we beat the Pistons tonight. And be 18 and 18, 500. Sounds like Kemba Walker. But uh, again, it's just like... You know, this season has been remarkable. It's been incredible. Just seeing a year's worth of just Hornets basketball, we went from being like a... People usually don't watch this team, but it's cool for me. You know, we're not as bad as I thought we would be. To, oh my goodness, the people on first take are talking about LaMelo Ball. Draymond is on first take talking about LaMelo Ball. Stephen A. Smith is talking about LaMelo Ball. And the Hornets, Rachel Nichols on the jump, is talking about LaMelo Ball. Or Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is on the Jalen and Jacoby show. Jacoby, I don't know. Uh, we are getting, like, attention. Miles Bridges, his career got saved by the mother ball. I don't care what y'all say. Miles Bridges, you are a good NBA player. You are. And I'm, I, I, I've always supported you, my man, except for the first few weeks of the your rookie season because you were awful. But let's face it, buddy. The mellow ball, he, you could get a decent contract just because of your highlight plays with LaMelo Ball. I, I'm sorry, Miles. It, it's just a fact. It's just a fact. 
This man has put you on the map, basically. And with the whole Airbnb nickname, which is great. It is cool to watch. And I'm happy that people want to watch the Hornets. I'm just in so much, like, almost shock of, is this a dream? People want to watch the Hornets. What? And at one point, the Hornets were better than the Heat. <laughs> Oh, man, and the Knicks are better than the Hornets. Beautiful. It's, it's a dream come true. I'm not even a Knicks fan, but I was just being sarcastic. Oh, man. Anyways, guys. No, oh, that's it. Sorry for basically talking for 25, 26 minutes about just Hornets basketball. But um, thank you for tuning in, and I'm excited for this next year of Hornets basketball. We could make the playoffs. We could make the playoffs. I'm really excited. Um, you know, I found a document, a Google doc the other day of predictions I made from two years ago, and uh, I might do a video and um, go through all of those predictions. Some of them are crazy, but a few of them I predicted and they have already come true. So, so yeah, but anyways, catch y'all later. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you myself for this great video and thank you guys for this great video because without you, I wouldn't be making videos. So peace out homies and Catch y'all later.